Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. This is Clay Ramage and this is part two of our Des Moines Goodwill bin slash thrifting slash antique store trip that we made over the past weekend. And uh, so we're going to go through what we found and what for resale, for personal use, and actually some of it goes to some other people. So if you're new to the channel, welcome. Uh, we do a lot of thrifting videos here. Um, a lot of hauls because I'm a part-time reseller. I sell on eBay, the Booth and Antique Store, sell on Facebook Marketplace, you know, those types of things. So anyway, so I pick up stuff so that we can resell. My wife picks up stuff for use and for gifts and also has a great eye and picks up stuff to help me along too. So anyway, let's just get into it because we have a lot. I'm thinking I might be able to get all of this in today's video if we move pretty quickly. If not... It'll have to be part three. But anyway, let's just get into it. I'll get some of the stuff out of the way in front of me. Our daughter was looking for these little magnetic things for her students. Don't even know what they are or what they do. But we did happen to find them at the bins, and apparently they're pretty expensive if you have to buy them new. So that was exciting. So for a couple dollars, our daughter gets some goodies. Another thing my wife bought were these VeggieTail napkins. She does, she sells for Juice Plus Company. So she, when she does little parties or stuff, she uses things like these. And because they're vegetables, she thought they were a great fit. So that's what those were. Um, in my last video, you saw they picked up a couple books, children's books. This is another book um, that I picked up the day before. Um, we went because we went on Friday and then we went on Saturday and this was on there on Friday and then on Saturday I found more it has was the same guy because it's the same name in the book so I'll put those down at the pink elephant for a few dollars this I thought was pretty cool it's a set of plastic vintage handles made in Taiwan no made in Hong Kong rather um you know so this would be for like making a macrame bag or a crocheted handbag or something like that so uh, I thought they were pretty cool. So I picked those up, still new in the package. That's pretty cool. I picked up this little print and it is dirty. It is a wood frame. But I just thought, oh, how 1970s, the yellow, the white. I mean, this would look great in the kitchen. It's a fern and some flowers in the picture. It's pretty cool. Nice size print. And again, we sell a lot of those prints down at the Pink Elephant. Um, found a little hummingbird. Well, one of them, just one. There probably would have been two or three of them in the set. And uh, so, and we sell stuff like this down at the Pink Elephant. In fact, I think Nicole sold some of those. I picked up this piece of um, artwork. It's, you know, probably a child's piece. It's initial down on the bottom, CRB. Um, but I just thought it was very cute and darling. I'll see if I can't get a few bucks for that. And another piece of artwork I picked up was this, a coastal scene, you know, with the beach, little boat, seagulls flying. I just thought it was a really cool um, print. It's done very loosely, you know, very quick brush marks. Um, but I just really liked it. And there was a frame that it went with, but I didn't buy the frame. It was loose out of the frame when I found it. But I didn't buy the frame either because I didn't like the frame as well. But I like the picture. So we got that one. And then you guys have in the past have heard me talk about buying vintage sheets that are still new in the package. Now this is some pillowcases we found. Two standard size pillowcases in a Wamzada, Wamzada brand. Oh, these were sold at Grams, wherever Grams was uh, when they were new. And so those were the pillowcases, and I found the ones out of Percale, Ultra Percale, Ultra Kale, I think they call it, yeah, Ultra Kale, um, set of the double flat sheets. And then this is a different one, but this is a spring made Marvel Air, no iron Marvel Air, it's called. Um, so yeah, so found some nice vintage. Uh, this is a twin flat sheet, nice vintage linens. New in the package. 
So I've sold, I sell these on eBay and I do really well selling those on eBay. So that is probably what I'm gonna do with those. Now this is like the cutest thing I think. We did find some loose change that we picked up a couple pennies in the dime. But anyway, look at this. It's a wicker teapot. And somebody put these little tassels on it. But I thought, oh, what a cute little decorative item. Never saw a wicker teapot before. So I had to get that. <sighs> Lots of stuff. How about a troll? It's a nurse troll. She even goes, um, it's even got m the mom pin on there, which I thought was pretty cool. The dress is a little dirty. And this is a Russ um, troll. I don't think it's that old, but I just troll so well. So I grab them when I see them. And then there's this vintage stocking, which I thought was just darling. Christmas stocking. Um, needs a good clean, but it's in pretty good shape. Just this one spot where the trim is letting loose. It looked like it was never really sewn on. And that's about it. Yeah. So just a little, little adjustment and she looks all new. That's where the fold is. So it's understandable that comes off. Speaking of Christmas. That's right. We found a little ceramic Christmas tree. Um, this one is missing some of the lights. And Sydney's like, it's broken. I'm like, no, it's just missing the lights. You could buy replacements of those. And there's even one with a little bird on it. But the unique thing about this one is it actually has the light switch on it. So you can turn it on and off. So now at these Goodwill bins, it, you pay by the pound for everything. Pretty much, unless they, there are certain categories that they individually priced, but for the most part, it was all by the pound. So I paid by the pound, whereas here I would have paid 99 cents. Oh, and it looks like it still has the original price of $10. Kind of looks like that on the inside, but, but yeah, so that's just a nice little Christmas tree. Um, and again, ceramic Christmas trees are very collectible. <laughs> Here's, I had to have this. I just thought it was hilarious. It's a hamburger dude. I mean, a hot dog dude. Now, I think he had something in his hands because they're, they're open holes for something like a knife and a fork or something. But I just thought it was hilarious. Never saw anything quite like him. So, he's a little rubber character. There was this vintage uh, beer can, Edelweiss light beer. There's a label on here. It says for a dollar. So somebody must have had it like that antique booth or something and donated their stuff. I just grabbed it because again, barware is pretty hot right now. All needs to top to be clean, but we'll clean that up. And then I found this beautiful cross. It's made out of Koa wood. Uh, it's Koa Hawaii. It's marked on the back. Plus it has the label on the back. I just thought it was beautiful. The wood on it is excellent. So, pick that up. Weighs almost nothing. And then this is probably our favorite find. is this little papoose. Um, and it's got a tag, Garden of the Gods, Colorado. So this probably would have been a souvenir piece. Stamped 35 cents on there. And then the little saying, it says, To say I haven't time to write sounds like a poor excuse. But that's the truth. And so I'll say hello with this papoose. So... Apparently you could mail it because it says two, so you could either give it as a gift or even mail it to somebody. Who knows? But I tried to look it up. I didn't find any similar ones um, in my quick looking for that. So, so I'm good with that. The other thing, there was a bag of vintage ties Cindy found, and then she goes, here, see if there's any good ties in it. So guess what? I did look through it and found some, like I love this tie. It's just a beautiful tie. Um, and it's a Bruno Piatelli. It's Italian tie. It's all right. It's not a high name tie. But there is this vintage Wembley tie, which I thought was really cool. Um, so got that one. There's this one, which is a Christian Dior tie. Okay, now we're talking high-end designer. I seem to find a lot of Christian Dior stuff. I'm not sure why, but I do. So, 
There's that one. And again, I don't know how hot the Thai market is right now. This one's the Oscar de la Renta. Another designer named Thai. Got some nice browns and oranges. And then I got this one because it's a it's got dogs on it. I thought it was pretty cool. Cool. It's called Dogs Hunting Made in Korea. So again, this was you know a little older tie. More vintage, doesn't have a name on it. Executive ties, it says. Whoever they are. So anyway, found some some of those. Oh my, I'm trying to decide what next. I got so much stuff. Well, let's just go with what's in front of me and make some room. Um there's this vintage um shredder. Only didn't have, we couldn't find the inserts to do the different, you know, shredding on it. So, so anyway, just picked that up. I don't know why I just did. Picked up this vintage purse. Got these, you know, plastic handles on it. It's actually in excellent condition. It's made in Hong Kong. Um, it's like a leather material on the outside. So I'm not sure if it's leather or not, but just a nice little clutch purse and brown. Found some Di Grazia uh, postcards. Um, and it even talks about him on the back. It gives more information about the artist. And his stuff is fairly collectible. So I thought, well, there's... I don't even know how many are in here. Mm, yeah, there's like six or seven. So that's a good amount. So I'll sell that as a pack. I like that. And then I found this plastic clown isn't he great the hoop the hoop's broke but i think i could easily just put a dab of glue on there and glue that and it says made in hong kong um it's again any more clown stuff but clown stuff sells one of the other things to keep your eyes out for are things like this now this is a stem for a percolator coffee pot now this particular one it's called the Universal number E7219, but it's got a name on here. It's Landers, Ferrari, and Clark, made in the USA. And it's got patent dates on here. Patent dates from May 22nd, 1894 to um, February of 1919, February 25th, 1919. So these early percolator coffee pots can be quite collectible. Um, and that's all we found was the stem. I was looking for the pot, but couldn't find the pot, but I found the stem. And because it's marked and named, there's one that just sold for $15. So no lid, but just the stem itself can be worth some money. So we'll take that. Oh, my light's falling over. Um, <laughs> George Jetson. Sorry, this is a 1989 toy, so it's, it's kind of vintage. Um, <laughs> Hanna-Barbera Productions. I just thought it was so cool. Loved the Jetsons when I was a kid. And still, even now. Maud Humphrey Bogart celebrating five years at Victoriana. This is a stick pin from 1992. Um, still in the package. Just thought it was a nice pen. Another penny. Oh! I was surprised to find this. I don't know how well it'll clean up, but it's a Harvard pen, Harvard University pen. Let's see the true test. Ooh, it still writes. That's even better. But yeah, I was kind of surprised to find that in the bins. Um, oh, Cindy found this key. Now I remember her talking about finding this key. So we found a key. Keys can be collectible, especially if you get a whole bunch of them and load them up. Found a Boy Scout tie clasp. Found a few pieces of jewelry. Found this little, I think it's more of an anklet due to the size, although it might be a bracelet. It's a little dangle on it. A uh, little, one of the stretchable rings with little bells. These all just go in one of my jewelry jars that I make up. And then there's this glass bead necklace, black and white. Kind of nice little Christmas pin made in Taiwan. A little vintage one. And I found a single earring. 
and this pendant, just like a shell pendant, it's got that little graphic on top, which is really kind of cool. So that was our fun little jewelry finds. I'm trying not to knock things down because I have stuff piled up all over. Then we found this Windsor doll chair, which I thought was just awesome. Of course, I'm a furniture guy. I love furniture. It did have a little break here that I glued um, on the leg. So it's now back together. But again, I'll put this down at the pink elephant, I think. I'll look them up and see, see what they go for. There's no label on anything on it. So I don't know who would have made it or what they would have gone for originally. But yeah, I just liked it. Vintage Christmas again, this little Christmas angel. Um, no label or anything, just a little Christmas angel uh, candle. And then there was this little vintage spinner top. It's painted in Christmas color, so I'm assuming it's probably a Christmas ornament for like, you know, toys. Found some very vintage cookie cutters. Um, so yeah, those are all on the string. Uh, what else do we got? Oh, Cindy must have picked up. Oh, yes. Um, 1999 Thai gold, exclusive for gold charter and platinum members only beanie. Oh, these are beanie babies. Beanie babies and beanie. These aren't. I thought she said they were Pokemon cards. <coughs> they were Beanie Baby cards. Anyway, so we got a pack of Beanie Baby cards. Found this Barcelona spoon, souvenir spoon, still in the package. They paid $9.50, it looks like, or $9.50 lira. Um, Multi-puzzle. Cindy must have picked this up. I don't remember seeing that. 48 fascinating puzzles. A little Hummel-like figurine, but she's in perfect condition. Little guitar player. And it's marked with an MR and an N, and I am not familiar with those marks on the bottom. Some of you guys may know, and you can let me know. All right, this one is another fabulous find, in my opinion. Look at this pig. And it says, you save money in a pig's eye. So it's a bank. So in the winking eye... Drop your coins through there. It's got a little rhinestone for his eye here. And some little decorative things on the top. But it's marked on the bottom, Kreis. K-R-E-I-S-S. -S. So it's a German company. German porcelain company. Make higher end porcelain. Um, she's a little dirty, so she needs a good bath. But, um, yeah. So I would expect $20, $25 for this one. I couldn't find an equivalent one like this. They have other pigs, but not a bank in this thing so it might be worth more this we actually picked up at a garage sale that we ran across it's just a yarn duck which i thought was cute picked up a little pack of half uh, index cards mini they're called um because i use these to do thank you notes in my packages when i ship stuff found this um compact is nice but somebody put a kiwanis international pin on the front it didn't originally come with that somebody stuck it on there um because then that's like a little locket you put it you could put a picture in there and then it opens up to be a compact with the mirror and your powder on the other side although it doesn't look or smell like anybody ever used it for that but you can hang it on your chain to be a pendant which i thought was pretty cool too so because it's got the sticker for kiwanis and it's a brass locket uh, that makes it collectible. A couple markets you could do. Um, I found these. These were actually at another thrift store, but I found these two little wall hangings, which I thought were awesome. Paid a dollar each for those. We'll put those up at the Pink Elephant. We sell a lot of that, along with this frame, made in Italy frame. Picked that up for 50 cents. And then I picked up this globe thinking, oh, what a great mid-century modern globe. I was all excited. And then when we got home, I noticed there's a crack right there. Although I think it could easily, you know, it's not very noticeable. You could still easily turn it into a light and have that turn to at the back. So I'll still see about selling that. I think it'll be all right. 
got this cute little tin, little tiny Christmas tin with Santa elves and some baby reindeer. That's pretty cool. My wife picked up some stray band-aids. Always use band-aids. Here's a mug. It's top of the morning from the bottom of my glass mug. Which I thought was pretty cool. So, again, you had to pay by the pound. So, at our bins, it would have been 49 cents. Good morning. It's a dollar fifty-nine a pound. Oh, this would pick up at the, uh, the one in a uh, thrift store, too. The little mini mouse frame, which I thought was great. I paid a dollar for that. I've sold all the Mickey and Minnie stuff that I put out at the Pink Elephant. This is a Windsor Castle tray by the Barrett Ware, made in England. Um, it's in great shape, just a little dirty, just a couple marks on it, but for the most part, it's in great shape. It'll clean up really nicely. So I grabbed that. Oh yeah, we're gonna make it through our little haul here in one video. So. Here is some plates Cindy picked up for some projects. Boom. No break. Yay. All right. More artwork. Some of you guys have asked me what I look for when I pick up artwork. Part of it is original artwork. This is a needlepoint um, piece. This happens to be a sports theme. So... And this would go great like in a child's room and it represents multiple sports. So depending upon how you're decorating. So this would be something I would pick up just because it uh, appeals to multiple people. Now this we picked up at, at the uh, Armadillo Antique Store. And I think I paid like 6 or $7. I can't remember for sure, which is a lot for me. But again, I, my thought was, could I get 15 to 20 out of it? Absolutely. So that's what I'm going to market at probably you know, 1999 and put it down at the pink elephant. It's not that old, but it's in great shape. It just needs a little brushing to clean it up. It's a little dusty. Um, so yeah, so that's one of the things I look for. The other thing I look for is the subject matter. Um, if it's a, you know, like a, like the one I picked up the beach scene, like this one, that's always a popular, uh, motif that doesn't, tend to go out of style um and the other thing I look for is mid-century modern artwork uh people like the bold bright colors so if you can find those that's another option um oh can't forget this uh found this vintage wreath which I thought was awesome uh Cindy goes oh that is really ugly yeah but people like this so this will go down <laughs> pink elephant for Christmas time. And speaking of Christmas, we found this box full of some Christmas ornaments. I really haven't pulled them out to look at them. Um, I just grabbed the whole box. And it's all tangled up. Oh, there's this ornament. Hmm. Little star ornament, nothing too exciting. Here's a plastic dove ornament. There's another one. They must have had these hanging more than just on the tree with these big wires on them. And here's a chalkware piece. Now this one's labeled Roma. Ornament Roma on the back. So it's possible this one could have been picked up when they were over in Rome on vacation or something. And then here's another one that's more yellowish. Now there's ways to get the yellowing out. But this looks like it was the glue that they used the back side is this it's the glue they use to put the glitter on it turned yellow oh it's a golf golf ball ornament although the golf ball is a cheap plastic one so it's not very heavy <laughs> otherwise it would lay heavy on the tree oh this is a cute little starburst pattern ornament it's a little violin it's cute oh and look there's a butterfly this looks like the Shrinky Dinks stuff. Don't know if it is, but it was never shrunk if it is. And then there's a couple homemade pieces. But anyway, so just a fun little little thing. Nothing too exciting, but the box is nice too. Oh, I picked up this little tiny wooden alligator. I don't know how you can best see him. 
This little hand carved alligator. I thought he was cute. Gingerbread, cookie cutter, an old time spice can, tin. And I picked this up too. This is a ormolu. It's cast resin ormolu. It's not the brass ormolu that's normally found on furniture. But this is like a reproduction that you could glue on your modern furniture um, to make it look, you know, more expensive, if you will. So people use these, crafters use these today for different things too. And brass is back, that brass tone. But one of my most exciting finds I found was this book. This is a Marshall Fields 1896 jewelry and fashion catalog. Um, this was this is actually a reproduction from 1989, I think, or 1980 something. Anyway, but what it is is they show all of the. Um, I'll show you a great picture. You'll understand why in a minute. I mean, I'm blocking my face at the moment. Um, is they show like the latest flatware trends. And here's what's hilarious. Let me see if it's on. Yeah. You guys, a couple videos ago, I picked up these fruit knives with this same pattern in them. That's what I think is fun. And that's why these old reference books can be really helpful if you can find like the old Sears catalogs that were published from the early 1900s or like this, the Marshall and Fields catalogs. Uh, even the reproductions are very helpful because it shows you um, these different information, like it has MF and Co on here. So that if you find silverware that says MF and Co, that means Marshall Fields and Company. Um, so it would be a Marshall and Fields piece. But then they also have ones with Rogers because they, you know, would deal exclusively with some manufacturers. So depending upon the pattern, depending upon what, they do different things like that. So and then they would have other pieces like this. And the other great thing is they explain what all of the um, tools are used for. So if you have one, like this is a gravy ladle, but this one is a, is a cream ladle. So there's differences between gravy ladles and cream ladles, which you can see in these particular um, pictures. Or there's the cold meat fork versus just the meat fork, or the bread fork, or the sardine fork, or the ice cream fork, which I didn't even know they had an ice cream fork, but they do have an ice cream fork. They have an oyster fork. They have an orange spoon. And a while back, I had found, I mean, months and months ago, I had found a spoon in an odd shape, and I didn't know what it was for. Well, guess what? I found it in here, and now I don't know if I can find it right away. Um, but it's actually called a cheese spoon. Some of you guys tried to help me out with it. Um, but it's a cheese spoon. Oh, come on. No, I'm not going to find it. But anyway, but the other thing they have in here is like the glassware, the latest cuts on glassware. And here's what surprised me is like some of these bowls, crystal bowls. Like this one new was $7 in 1896. This was expensive stuff in its day. You can buy it cheaper today than you could back then. This one was $19. $19. So, it's called Rich Cut Glass. And rich is right, because, boy, you had to be rich to afford it back in those days. But anyway, so it's really fun to have these kinds of things. Same with hair pieces or all of these other tools. Personal care. So that's why I pick up books like that because they are really helpful for, from an information standpoint to understand what it is you have, what it's called, what its use was, um, because they had, you know, Victorians especially had a use for everything. And a special tool developed for almost everything you could imagine. So anyway, so that is pretty much a haul. There's some stuff I'm not showing you that we're just keeping for personal use. Nothing exciting like a couple pieces of clothes and stuff like that. Little baggies or whatever. But um, but yeah, we had a great time. Found some great stuff. So uh, appreciate you guys watching. And we'll catch you next time. Bye.